I was kind of in the back, and I did like you know uh, McCombie, but that was McCombie's Super Bowl. You know what I mean? Sometimes we step down a little bit to the play to the competition level of competition, but I thought overall that uh, Caleb did his thing. Leonard, 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 Leonard started off a little rocky, and then all of a sudden you put a tent over the circus, and it truly turned into AWD. As you said, it was ass whooping day. Walk me through it. Uh, you know, uh, we knew he was snappy, fast, and um, he was a little bit awkward stepping through with his punches, winging them. So just had to find my distance, my rhythm, and, and my timing. And, uh, you know, a lot of people say I can't fight on the inside, but I think I proved everybody wrong on that tonight. Uh, stepped to him, stayed calm, even after the knockdown. He, he hit me on my shoulders, and I was just off balance. So I stayed calm, stayed cool, stick to the gun plan, and got that motherfucker out of there, like we said. What was the, uh, what was the plan at the end, though? Because two minutes and 59 seconds, were you tempted kind of, you know, waiting for the bell to come off of him, or were you, uh, were you motivated to make sure you got the knockout in nine? I mean, I don't know when the bell's coming, so I'm punching until the ref steps in and says stop, you know? And uh, I was punching, you know, right when the bell came through, but those punches were coming through before the bell and got him out of there. After a nap, what's next for Caleb Plant? Uh, I'm going to go home, spend time with my family, play princess and make up with my daughter. And, uh... and to close everything out, Trevor McCumbie, last for me, uh, versus Caleb Plant. Caleb Plant, uh, a lot of people said that was a master class by Caleb Plant, one of the most entertaining fights of the night. What do you think, Jim? What a show. Yeah, and Caleb Plant is a craftsman. Caleb Plant has real skills. And Caleb Plant was in against a bigger, stronger fighter. And yeah, I, don't, I would say it's a master class. It was a brilliant demonstration of the skills you use and the counterpunching ability uh, that was necessary for him to beat Trevor McCombie. And he got a great win. Man, it feels good. Um, put a lot of hard work in over the last 18 months with my team. And, uh, you know, like I said, it had been a little bit since I've been away from the ring, but had 359 rounds of sparring. So been staying extremely busy. I went through some ups and downs, um, not with my family, but just some injuries. And so for me to work myself back into this position and have the performance that I have tonight, it, it means a lot. I put a lot of hard work in to get that. So, yeah, you know, he was awkward and strong and um, unorthodox. You know, he would step through on his stance and kind of bull rushed me at times and um, he even caught me in my shoulders once as I was pulling out and, you know, knocked me down as he was punching my shoulders. I wasn't hurt at all, so it didn't really rattle my feathers or anything like that. I just stayed calm and, you know, I knew that um, I just switched, we switched to the second game plan and, you know, once we got there, it was easy money. Fell down and um, we got back up and went to work and we got that stopped. Tell us about the stoppage here, the uh, fifth and ninth round. Oh uh, yeah, I knew I had him hurt. Time to go to work and uh, get him the fuck up out of there, like I said. So Trevor, Trevor, I'd like you to go. Way to fight, bro.
Before the fight, Trevor McCombie says Caleb Plant is a prima donna and a crybaby, with his delusional narrative about how he called him out for their fight on Saturday night. McCombie points out that Plant chose him to fight out of three or four fighters. McCombie thinks that Plant has anger issues, and he suspects that the millions that he made from his fight against Canelo Alvarez gave him a warped view of his talent. The 14-year pro McCombie is finally getting an opportunity for an important fight, and he plans on taking full advantage of it by knocking out Plant in the eighth or ninth rounds. McCombie stated, I have wanted an opportunity my whole career. It didn't happen in the first half of my career. Now I'm getting it. Trevor McCombie further said to the media, talking about finally getting an important fight in his 14th year as a pro. I called out three or four other names in that call-out video. So, I think Caleb is a little delusional. He's creating a narrative in his head that I'm a bad guy and that I called him out. I called him out, but you chose to fight me. I'm not in that position. He knows that. He's going to keep crying about fighting me. He's the one that chose me. He had four other names he chose me, so I don't know. In the meantime, even though he may be a fan favorite, boxing fans do not think highly of Caleb Plant. That's the reason why everyone in 168 is hoping that he loses on September 14th. In spite of facing a fighter returning from a five-year hiatus, the boxing community feels that Caleb would lose badly to Trevor McCombie. Edgar Berlanga Jr. is the most recent addition to Caleb's hate train. Edgar Jr. is the main attraction at T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. Due to the unpleasant behavior from earlier, these two are constantly arguing with one another, some of their most acrimonious exchanges in the past. And if you don't fight Canelo in September? I got my business already in September. He said if you don't get the Canelo fight, then we're going to run it next. That's what you said, right? You know what I'm saying? That's what you said. No, I promise you. No, besides promise, I'm saying that's what you said. I'm going to knock you out, bro. I'm going to knock you out. Take your glasses off. I'm going to knock you out. 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 Take your glasses off. For what? Edgar bragged in a recent episode of The Cigar Club that at one point, he was about to knock out Caleb with a big slap on the face. The only reason he left the idea was because he knew that Caleb would sue him or file a police case against him. He added, yeah, he was on some sucker if you see the whole thing, in the beginning I was cool with the nigga. I got respect for the nigga. But he's like, huh, huh, huh. He's lucky I ain't smacked the shit out of him. I would have knocked him out. So it won't be a big surprise if we see them lined up against each other in the future. Moreover, their clash was also seen on the undercard revelation for the 14th of September. Here, Edger openly showed his disgust towards the former middleweight champion. Edgar also promised that he wouldn't end up on the 14th as Caleb did. You can have all the power in the world. You can do what you do, but... At this level is intelligence and IQ. And we're not gonna end up like that. Nigga over there. I got knocked out. Caleb. Alright. Alright. Hey, right. They're call both down. on the same car. Yeah, Alright, right. let's turn stop, things stop, back stop, over. Stop, stop, stop. Caleb, Caleb. No? Take it easy. I'm gonna I'm gonna take care of him for you. <laughs> Moreover, Edger slammed Caleb for fighting on his undercard and being a nobody in the division. The Puerto Rican-American boxer continued about the chances of a fight in the future. I see myself getting in the ring with him. He needs guys like me. He can't sell sh**. He's actually fighting on my card now. That's my son now. He was talking all that sh**. Now he's on my card. He can't even sell out a family dinner. He can get tight, but it's the truth. Caleb has also bounced back on the heat from the youngster. He claimed that after countering Trevor, the next number was going to be Edgar. He had enough of his passive and peaceful interactions with Berlanga and threatened him. This is like the third or fourth time now he's done threatening to smack me in my face. So when I wanna put my foot in his I don't wanna hear nobody in any comments I'm talking about, oh, Caleb, was he? Yeah, well, step to me, threatening me that you're gonna smack me in my face. See how that works out. Just like Edger, his promoter was also fed up with all this bad blood with Caleb Plant. In a live chat with Edgar, he said, So what I don't understand is the guy, Caleb Plant, he had a shot, he got knocked through the ropes. Why are you worried about your fight? Yeah, he another dude. He got a whole other fight he had my press conference. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like what is he doing? Like what, what is dude. he talking about? Clout and you chaser. got knocked through the ropes. It's almost like signing in. It's almost, it, it made me feel like Rikers Island or something. The guy done got his ass whipped. Now he want to big up the guy whipped his <laughs> right to, No, I never seen nothing like this uh, in my life. Yo, we hugging him and all. I'm like, yo, it was a... No, it's unbelievable. He shot thing left. 
No. Other than Berlanga, another ill-wisher of Caleb has made a statement about the co-main event of the 14th. Ryan Garcia has joined the website formerly called Twitter and gave his prediction of this fight. He declared, Trevor McCombie will pull off the W and Ann upset over Caleb Plint. Book it. Trust me on this. This post was noticed by Swift Hands, and he came with a sharp answer. He launched an attack on Ryan and Trevor for their usage of banned substances and reposted, a cheater picking another cheater to win. Imagine that. Ryan is very active about his social media trolling of Caleb where he regularly posts disrespectful stuff. This led to a major brawl when Caleb threw beer glass on him after the Tank vs. Martin fight. And not only that, Caleb further punked Ryan Garcia on his one-year ban for the use of performance-enhancing drug Osterine before the fight against Devin Haney. Caleb included these insights after his media workouts. You know he's been swearing up and down that he is innocent, and if it's so easy to prove, obviously one would go to court and prove that rather than cough up $1.5 million and take a one-year ban. Regardless of how much money you have, I ain't coughing up that much money, especially if I know I'm innocent. Well, he took the other route, so that says a lot. Boxing streamers on the Boxing Voice podcast think that Trevor will give Caleb a tough time. They placed their bet on Trevor and said, "Yeah, I was there for the Trevor fight in your in your event. He, I told people he has a he has a decent little fan base. I can see him getting a big fight with Caleb Plant now and selling a lot more tickets." Caleb's father, Richie Plant, also sees a very tough matchup against Trevor McCumbie. He is the co-trainer of his son and admitted that the inactivity has hurt the campaign of his son, but he hasn't spent a day without sweating in the gym. There's been been, there's been uh, quite a layoff. It's been some time since we've been in the ring. It's it's not the way we wanted things to be, but you know, sometimes life doesn't give you exactly what you want, and, and circumstances don't work out exactly the way you want. So, you know, our our only alternative, since we weren't able to get the fights that we wanted when we wanted them, was just to continue to spend time in the gym and, and, and just continue to sharpen our knives, you know? Caleb's coach is also sure of a convincing victory and refers to him as a thick-skinned on his regular bad blood with other boxers. He wants Caleb to pull off a magnificent victory and become a two-time world champion. His thoughts about this fight were, Uh, I mean, it's a great card. This is a bad blood fight. It's two guys that don't really like each other. Trevor's a big puncher. Uh, so I think he's definitely going to try to come and knock Caleb out. Uh, but um, whatever he can do to us, we could do to him. So we, we're going to try to knock him out too. You know, uh, so we, we he, the same thing he wants to do to us. I don't believe he's the puncher in the fight. So we got, we're going to find out. Uh, but I expect a knockout in the fight. Caleb's father also made a bold prediction about this fight and claimed that Caleb would be coming for an early knockout. We're 110% coming to win. So it's going to be going to be an exciting fight. I know Caleb's got a lot of fans out there and and uh, they're going to be they're going to be really happy with, with with what they see. Caleb's opponent is also coming with full preparation. Despite the 5-year layoff and including a 9-month PED ban, Trevor is sure that he will counter Swift Hands. He is bothered by Caleb and his camp's remarks about him and wants to settle this score in the ring. I have respect for Caleb, but at the end of the day, come fight night, nah, I'm coming for you. Trevor also slammed Caleb's claims about his nervousness in this fight. He gave his firm response and said, "He can say whatever he wants at the end of the day." He can think what he wants. I'm not even worried about him. I'm training really hard. I'm dropping sparring partners. It's hard to keep them around, so I don't know if he can say the same, if he's training as hard as I am. Both fighters did a gentlemanly face-off, but after that, they are adding fuel to the build-up by their stinging remarks. First of all, Trevor McCumbie called his opponent a quitter, and then Caleb brought some demons from his past. You know, he's been um, calling me a quitter, and, you know, if any of you guys can raise your hand of, you know, seeing me quit, in a fight or anything in life, you know, raise your hand and let me know because, you know, if it's one thing I'm not, I'm not a quitter. I'm not a cheater either. And he, he's a cheater. He, he's been um, caught, he's been busted, he's been suspended, he's been fined for not only uh, taking steroids but also for getting a legal IV after the weigh ins. And um, so, you know, 
That's not my type of guy. McCombie has also shown some concerns about Caleb's hostile behavior towards him. In one media session, he explained why he called Caleb a quitter. He recalled Canelo's fight against Caleb and said, I don't know, he was just giving me that vibe. I saw it within the Canelo fight. He goes mid-fight. I'm a pretty good fighter, huh? At that point, you already quit. You're like trying to be friends with your opponent and that's all fine and dandy after the fight, but during the fight, it showed me that he quit in that fight, so it is what it is. Their media workout was also filled with similar allegations and threatening remarks about each other. Caleb has shown the world that he was regularly sparring and training in the gym. With a firm belief that this hard work will translate well into the ring, the swift hand said, I'm ready to show the fans what a good old-fashioned ass whooping looks like. His zero has got to go. It's out of here. In addition, Caleb made fun of his opponent from Tennessee for not having a single respectable fight on his record. Caleb saw this fight as merely a stepping stone to bigger fights down the road. With no regard for Trevor's perfect record, he added, this is McCombie's opportunity. Up until now, he's been a 30-year-old prospect. He's waited a long time to step up into a big fight, and I think it's because he doesn't believe in his skills. He can talk all the talk he wants, but actions speak louder than words. In the media workout, Caleb discussed his father and his trainer, Stephen Bredman Edwards, in addition to Trevor and Berlanga. He is confident that with their help, he will easily win this fight and go on to bigger ones in the future. Caleb paid his homage to his father and trainer and said, I haven't thought past Trevor McCombie. I'm focused on the task at hand, but I know that winning this belt will put me in a good position for future fights. My trainer, Stephen Edwards, and my dad are like an echo of each other. They're basically the same person, and it makes everything really smooth. Trevor McCombie, who recently had a longer period of inactivity, has stated that he wants to excel. He is aware that he is the fight's underdog, and that his past transgressions will cause him to be viewed with contempt. He expressed his admiration for the entire September 14th event and pledged to deliver a fantastic performance. Trevor said, I'm not worried about anything Caleb says. I treat every fight the same and train very hard every time. I'm preparing to face the best Caleb plant. I'm coming to show that I have skills as well. This is my coming out fight. The world is going to see who I am. I'm coming into that ring with tenacity. Due to his lack of activity, Trevor McCombie is excluded from the boxing scene. However, he has a spotless record of 28 victories out of 28 contests. The undefeated combatant defeated Donovan George via first-round knockout in his 2016 ring debut. But when it was discovered that Trevor had a prohibited substance in his system, the fight was called off. Due to the ongoing legal proceedings, the decision was not made until September of the following year. This was the worst period of Trevor's life when he was granted a nine-month suspension. At that point, McCombie strongly considered retirement at the time, but has reconsidered it. Since then, he has added five more wins since 2018. These boxers include Christopher Pearson, Vincente Martin Rodriguez, and Felipe Romero. The biggest was in his most recent outing, a 10-round decision win over Chris Pearson on January 31st in Plant City, Florida. Since then, he's stayed grounded and focused in his gym. Originally, his fight against Caleb was announced for 17th of August, but that news evaporated soon because of an injury faced by Trevor. About his struggling phase, Trevor said, I stay grounded and focused on my goal. That's the most important thing. I've been boxing since I was seven years old, and I've been on really big stages before. I'm prepared for this moment. Moreover, he has shown frustration with guys who think that he's not a legit contender in this fight. He recalled his outstanding pro record and amateur pedigree and concluded, I am sick of this modern day boxing culture. Oh, he didn't deserve to fight me. Oh, he hasn't fought me, bud. I'm 28-0 with 21 knockouts. Seven-time national champion, ranked number 10 in the WBA. I've been ranked at all four organizations for a very long time now. Let's make boxing like it used to be and let's fight. But Caleb has completely overlooked Trevor and has proposed the next fight after this showdown. He wants a rematch with the Mexican superstar who took his middleweight crown. In a recent interview, Caleb convinced everyone that he deserves a rematch with Canelo. He said, I feel it's worth it, especially since we had a competitive fight the first time. It was probably 6-4 before the 11th round. I feel I'm worthy. But first, you tell us how you see this fight going. Tell us in the comments and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel.